Hello and welcome back to Cocktails and Containers. I have a very special episode for you today. I am talking to two of my friends who also happen to be amazing photo organizers. <laughs> They're from a company called Pixel Winks here in Columbus and Tamara and Kim I've known for several years through the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. And they are here today. Yeah, it's a long, it's like the longest title. Ever. Long name. <laughs> <laughs> and they are here today to give us some tips on backing up our photos and how to get our photos organized. Like say if we want to digitize them at some point. And then what I am super excited about is some ideas for gifts that you could give this holiday season that would include your photos. So lots of stuff to talk about. But first we're going to dive into the best part of today. <laughs> which is wine pairings for your upcoming holiday. So, <laughs> when the, I pick, the real deal. The important things. <laughs> really, like after this, you can just, you know, no, don't yeah. shut it off after this. But um, <laughs> when I proposed this to Kim, when I said, you know, what, what if we just do wine? Kim was like, wine. Wine is always a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> we so, have an expert here. <laughs> yeah. So I have, um, I have, a couple of suggestions that I have for pairing with Holiday Fair, and then Kim and Tamara are also going to give us some suggestions. So we can kind of go back and forth a little bit. I am going to start with uh, what I am actually having right now, which is, it's a Pinot Noir. Um, wow. And that is... Perfect for breakfast. Oh, yes. It is the perfect breakfast wine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My husband is like, when I said I need wines that go with Thanksgiving fair, he said Pinot Noir first off the bat. And believe it or not, even though turkey being a white meat, Pinot Noir is a great pairing for it. It also pairs really well with salmon. And you can mm. usually find a really great one for about $15 a bottle, maybe even less. Trader Joe's is a great place to go for wine, not plugging it just because my husband works there. But <laughs> <laughs> lots of good choices, right? Lots of good choices there. I think the one that I purchased there was like $10. Um, there is a little bit with Pinot Noirs, though, depending on what kind of, of wine drinker you are. I prefer ones that are either from France or that are, which are Burgundies is what they're called when they're from France, or that are from the northwestern part of the United States, so Washington or Oregon. And the reason being is that the soil there is a little more vocal volcanic. So you're going to get an earthier wine versus a California Pinot Noir where you're going to get a, a little bit fruitier. But depending on your palate, that may be what you want to serve your guests because it's going to be a little bit fruitier. So I today highly recommend my number one go-to wine for Thanksgiving is Pinot Noir. What about you guys? What do you guys got on tap? We have some red blends. We okay, have, awesome. um, I am a 14 hands red blend. Hot to that is a, that's a fantastic one. And what's the primary wine on that or primary um, grape on that? You I don't know. Here, I let's know. see. What's on that. <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't. Let's see. It's a smooth red blend. Does it say um, ripe balance berries balanced with smooth flavors of black cherry and plum? Okay. Uh, so, and that is yeah. the reason with it being a smooth wine. That's what's going to go good with that Thanksgiving beer because look, acid. You need like acid yeah. and smooth. You don't want big flavors of like Cabernet and Cabernet Sauvignon because it's it's going to compete with all the fats and the flavors that you have going on with the meal. So anything that says smooth, velvety, light, acidic, that's the kind of stuff that you're looking for in a wine for um, for a, a big family dinner, you know, no matter what you're serving. Um, now I do have a Cabernet Sauvignon and what you're going to want to serve that with is if you're doing a brisket or you're doing a tenderloin. Or just a spare bottle on hand <laughs> in case someone, you never know. know. You never it, know. It's getting cold out. So, That's you know, right. like, I like a little Cabernet blanket in the winter, you know? <laughs> you that, like, warm Nothing wrong with that. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that at all. Um, so, you guys look to be red drinkers. Are you typically red drinkers? I think so. Or, you know, maybe in the winter. Yeah, I would, um, I'm actually probably more a white drinker. Oh, okay. uh, Riesling and... Um, I love Riesling. I'm German. I saw your little mm. program about the Gewurztraminer and all that. Yeah. So, perfect. Um, well, I have a couple of whites then for you. So you won't be too uh, nice. by the stuff Good. I have here. So um, one of the whites that I'm going to recommend, and again, this is kind of in the same vein as the um, Gewurztraminer, where it may be one that you might not be super familiar with, but you can usually get a really great value. And it's, okay. it's a Viognier. And this is a grape. Think of it as 
a little bit more acidic Chardonnay. So again, kind of like the Cabernet, you're not going to want to serve Chardonnay with a lot of your Thanksgiving fare because it's big. It's got a lot of flavors. It'll kind of sit on your tongue and coat your tongue, which is what right. a Chardonnay is supposed to do. But right. if you also have a lot of food and fats <laughs> and mashed potatoes and all that stuff sitting on there, it's not going to taste very good. So what's great about a Viognier, sort of in the same uh, vein as the Gewürztraminer that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. is it's got a little acidity. So it's going to cleanse the palate mm -hmm. versus sitting on the palate. And have more room for food. More and room pie. for food. I mean, in Fine the bread. end, that is what it's all dessert. about, right? I yeah, mean, exactly <laughs> how much pie can I eat yeah. and how much... <laughs> Can I eat? Exactly. Um, so that's a great one. And then another great way to go, which a lot of people don't think about or they think that it's going to be way too expensive, is bubblies. So this is a Blanc de Blanc. And I got this at Trader Joe's. I think this was like eleven ninety nine, but it's such a fun little like. Oh, I love the I bottle. Know, I know it's super <laughs> fun. But a Blanc de Blanc is going to be not as dry as a Brut. So if you have a lot of palates oh. to, to to please in your house or at your dinner, and you don't, people are like, "Oh, it's too dry. I don't want to drink that." It's got <laughs> it's got a little bit more to it than like a traditional Brut Champagne would have. But it's gonna again the bubbles, the acidity is gonna kind of cleanse your palate it and make your food taste better versus competing by co coating your tongue in that sort of like wine film that you get. Um, and then finally, I have, um, I know, right? I told you. I, I know, you I did know. a good job. I seemed like at nine o'clock in the morning as I'm going out of Trader Joe's with a half a like, nice of the wine, my husband's like, nice look, really? <laughs> But you're finally, just like your planner. Yeah. <laughs> so a rosé is uh -huh. the other one that I have here for you, and that is um, so rosé is not white zin. So very clear, uh -huh. white zin is basically a dyed pink wine that they put sugar in. So uh -huh. not white zin. A rosé is so all all grapes. This is, this is where I nerd out. Okay, let me nerd out. For a second. <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, all the wine is made with red grapes. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So it just matters how long you leave the skins on. Right. So the red, the red wine is going to have a little bit more skin on. So it's going to a little bit, it's going to be richer and fuller and darker in color. So the rosés are basically just, they just take the skins off like halfway through. So don't oh. think of it as something that's sweet. Don't be afraid of it. And again, what's perfect about a rosé with something like Thanksgiving dinner is that it's got that acidity um, they do tend to be slightly on the sweet side, not yeah. what Riesling would be, not super yeah. sweet, but they're going to sort of cleanse your palate a little bit. And again, we're thinking about pleasing a lot of palates if you don't want to buy a bottle of wine for each person that's coming to dinner. <laughs> so it's a great way to sort of like please the people who know about wine and are like, oh yeah, rosé, great choice with a meal. And the people that are like, I don't drink anything but Riesling, which is fine, <laughs> but you know, you want to try to please everybody or, or right. buy 15 bottles of wine. If you're going to look for wines for your holiday fair, whether it's Thanksgiving or Hanukkah or Christmas or, you know, St. Patty's Day, Make sure when you go in to talk to people at your wine shop, tell them what you're serving and tell them you need something with a little bit of acidity and they'll definitely be able to help you out. Don't just go to your traditional like, well, I owe, this one's got a pretty label. That works so well. <laughs> when you're trying to pair it, you need, you need just a little right. bit. Hopefully I've given you some stuff that you guys can go in. Nice. Uh, find yeah, some that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, okay, we're going to move into the part that I am super excited about because admittedly, this is an area I struggle in. <laughs> Don't we all? I, as well. <laughs> I am really great at keeping the toys from coming in and paring down kitchen stuff and making sure stuff gets done. But I, and right now I checked before I got on here, I've got 800 photos on my phone right now. But I do go, good. That's I feel like that's pretty I'm very good. Impressed. But yeah, I do yeah. I do really struggle. And I always feel like this when I'm when I'm either when I'm putting together these episodes or when I am dealing with clients. Like if I if it's something that I'm struggling with or they're struggling with, it's something somebody else out there is struggling with, which obviously you guys have made a business about. So tell me a little bit about how you met. Tell me about your business and what you do for people. Oh, this is Tamara. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, we met at a school where our kids go. Uh, we were um, volunteering in the art department and um, 
putting up art for art um, shows, you know, everything. And fundraisers. Fundraisers and, and doing a lot of auctions for um, our school's fundraiser, our big one. And these were big, big projects together. And we were doing, we were working really, really well together. And we were having fun. And it, it was probably three to four years of doing this together. Right, that's probably true. Probably. Yeah. And, and we didn't kill each other. And <laughs> we were having fun. And. We're like, you know, we we could make something out of this, you know, and I freelanced for a long time by myself and I didn't want to have to do work again by myself. You know, I was kind of lonely and like, you know, it's like if you have somebody to bounce ideas off of, you know, it, it makes work Everything more so fun. much more fun. I get that a hundred percent because as a solopreneur, like it's so nice to have somebody say, you guys, you guys are a, a marriage made in heaven right there. That's perfect. Well, and yeah. We're kind of complimentary personalities. Yeah. Kim was a freelancer. I worked for a big box company and, um, she's a little more introverted. I'm a little more extroverted. Um, I'm the more I'm, you know, I do have design, but she also has design, but she has business senses and, and she can, I may be able to make things really, really pretty, but she can word things with, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. You know, I can't, I, I don't do that. It would take me three days to do what she does in 20 minutes. Yep. You, know? you guys are the yin to each other's yeah, yeah. It's really great. It. It's fun. And, I and think we that, still like each other. I know. That's great. <laughs> and I'm sure that that's part of the reason why you've been so successful and that you've been able to create this business, you know. So tell, yeah. tell people, what, I interrupted you. Tell people what you do because it's really awesome. So Pixel Winks, we've been in existence about five and a half years. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Kim on her own initially would organize her photos every year. Um, she was a Mac person and would make annual albums, kind of like a yearbook for her family. And um, I think you would tell people about that a little bit. And the more mm -hmm. we started talking about that with other people, we realized as kind of the whole digital world took off, we all have phones. The phones all have really actually pretty now pretty great cameras that take good pictures except we take 10 of them and we never go back and delete the nine that are just you know not quite as good as the one that we keep and so so we do every we tell people we do everything photo it doesn't um we even take photos if if absolutely necessary we generally don't want to but but we will because kim has like kim went to ccad i went to capital we have a background that works with that but so we help people with their whole photo their whole family photo archive we take it all we digitize it if it's printed we create a family archive of their history with digital photos with printed photos with slides with um videos with Absolutely. just about everything and it's That's easier for it sorry it's easier for us because we don't have the emotion attached attached to it so it's much easier for us to do that Absolutely. That's probably our number one question is yeah. how do how do you know what to choose for that slideshow or how do you know what to choose for that book well we can tell number one what's important to you by how you take pictures of it and number two we can see themes kind of the the photos start to tell a story and we can kind Absolutely. of figure that out based upon what our clients take photos of. What and an so, awesome gift that, that you guys awesome. are able to do that. And you know, it's very true because I, I myself am totally guilty of this. I take photos and then they just sort of like live in this like cloud or on right. my hard drive or wherever. And I don't ever do anything. And I love the way that you phrase it, that you're telling a story or that you're, you know, telling the family, the family story or about the heirlooms of the family. And I, I love being able to use these photographs to do that. To do something. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So exactly. admittedly, I have a ton of pictures on my phone. I have okay. So okay. wait, wait, no, wait, no, wait. No, Let's no. pause right there <laughs> because 800 <laughs> is nothing. None. <laughs> um, are, are we going to divulge what we have on our phones? I think I have 6,000 and I know she has more. Okay. All right. I, I'm feeling very good right now. Okay. But yes. <laughs> oh, you should. Let me see. I'm looking. Although we have a lot of work stuff on there. And yeah, we have now a we're, lot justifying. Of, we're justifying. <laughs> yeah, I now have 11,000. 
Oh, 11. I don't even know how you fit that many. Part of my thing is my, my phone will tell me like you're running out of space. There you go. So I, right. and exactly. I do a lot of video on my phone also. So that takes uh, a you would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know how I, so, you know, so let's touch on this really quick. Uh, the reason I have so few is that I make a date with myself once a quarter. It's on my list of seasonal Good. things to do to clear out my phone of anything that I don't need any longer. And what I do is I go back to the previous season. So like if I, That's when good. I just, for the fall, if I was starting to see summer stuff, I was like, okay, I kept this on here for a reason, which I'm not even sure why I'm keeping it on. There. Right. If the reason at the time seems so important right. until you get to the next season, right. you go, oh, I don't need that anymore. Right. right. But that's how I kind of keep um, keep it under control is by setting that date with myself. And basically what I do is like two or three nights, I sit in my bed before I go to sleep and I just delete, 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 delete. And I'm like, okay, that's 150. I'm done. Let me get this back down. And so right. you're lucky that you caught me after I just did it in September. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when you say that you set a date with yourself, um, does that mean are your um, are you connect, connected to the iCloud or not, or are you just do it all manually? By yeah, I, I'm an Android girl, so oh, that's right. right. Okay, I'm connected to Google Photos, but what I do is I do it in Google Photos because when I delete it off of Google Photos, it also deletes it off. Right, my phone. so right. it takes it out of both places because I need We're, it. I need it out of both places. Right, right. and it does that on um, Apple's iCloud as well, but there's um, varying. I don't know, opinions about some people don't want to keep anything on their phone. And so they don't connect those and some people do. And it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. If you delete it off of the computer or if you delete yeah. it off your phone, you don't delete it both places. Yeah. yeah. So because uh -oh. it's, it's becoming clutter someplace else. So absolutely. Okay. So, but what's really important is the reason I do have it backed up to the Google Photos is as a backup. And yes, this is something absolutely. I know that you guys do workshops about this. I know that it is like one of your main mantras that you put out there is backup, backup, backup. So right. talk to me a little bit about how many backups you need, how to simply back something up and like maybe even like I don't even know why you would have to explain why, but you know, there's a lot of people out there who still don't back up. So talk to me a little bit about backing up your photos. Well, and it's technology I think that people are uncomfortable with. And so I think that contributes to them not Absolutely. figuring out how to back up. Um, Cause some backups go out of business. You know, if you have a website and you're backed up to something, they may go out of business if they don't, you know, if they don't have a plan or, you know, to keep it going. We always, yeah, we always talk about um, three backups. So one is none, meaning if you lost that one, the photos on your phone and you dropped your phone in water and you didn't have them backed That's up that, anywhere, they're gone. they're gone. So two is one, meaning if you lost one, you would still have that one backup someplace, whatever that would be. And then three is best. And when we say three, we mean maybe two at home and then one offsite, whether that's in the cloud or whether that is we different have, devices, you know, an external right. hard drive, paper, you know, pa paper prints are fine too. That's a backup as right. well. And it's easy, but a lot of yeah. people don't print don't, anymore. Right. But we have a client who just switches out external hard drives every month from his, um, his safe deposit box right. and he just copies it over and then switches them out, um, which is great because external hard drives are a backup, but they also die their equipment like any, everything else and they're not going to last forever. Yeah, and I totally had album. that happen. I had an external hard drive die on me and I lost everything that was oh. on. So, and right. I only, that was my only backup. So I am a hundred percent. I, I know how this works. Now I have three cloud backups. So you recommend oh. some sort of hard backup then also, right? Um, hard meaning printed or Before, hard or, or a hard drive or a CD even. I don't even know. Yeah. Did I, did, I think Absolutely. I can lose it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Some kind of hard backup because CDs, um, you know, you can still buy a floppy disk reader. Like no one uses floppy disks for years yeah. and years and years and people don't even know what that is. But you can go online and find a floppy disk right. reader. So, or a thumb drive, right? A thumb drive would probably work too. The or thumb drives, work. those are really, you know, when first thumb drives first came out, they were meant to just transfer information from one thing to the okay. next. They're not really meant to store information. Store and save. You know, and even technology, technology dies. We all know that. So it's one of those things where you just got to keep it updated. I know a couple of years ago, what I did, I sat several nights. I think it was actually when my second son was born and I was, I was basically like, you know, a cow for a couple of weeks sitting on the couch. 
I sat there and I went through and picked like my favorite, favorite pictures and put them all on CDs. So I have this. These are great. great. Uh, yeah, because those. You know, but I think get wet, you know, they're not going to die. Right. But of course I haven't done it since then. So there's no record of him <laughs> other than being a baby. So. <laughs> and there's all kinds of other, you know, like when we talk about cloud, which is completely confusing to everyone, but we try to tell people it's like a file cabinet in the sky. So it's another place that your photos or your documents or whatever can live on. And there's several play, um, there are several companies out there that will just make a backup of your entire computer, including your photos. And so that's another, you know, to have multiple of those is Wonderful. great. But yeah. what we do tell people is if it's free, you get what you pay for. So if you are using a free service online as your backup, and all of a sudden they decide, decide to go out of you know, business or they start to charge, someone else has access to your photos and that's yeah. not good. That's, yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, just as a, like, I'm not getting paid for this, but like I have Mosey right. that I back up my hard drive to every night. I have Google photos that I back up everything on my phone to whenever I'm on a Wi-Fi, And then I also have OneDrive. I have the um, mm. uh, Microsoft OneDrive. Right, that right. So I have, because I have that like as a backup to Mosey or Mosey. Right, a backup to a backup. That's backup right. To backup. So, okay. You I think like yeah. it's key. That's yeah. what you want. I feel like that's, the, I'm doing good. Okay, so not everybody is all digitized. And there are people out there, especially if they are used to printing photos or they still have tons of photos that are printed that maybe want those to be digitized or they're just overwhelmed by all the photos. They don't even know what is what. So what are some of your tips for organizing those actual photos that people have in their houses? <laughs> we do a lot of we that. We do a lot of that. <laughs> um, first, if there's a lot of different decades, um, when we first take, if we get bins and bins of somebody's uh, family uh, archive um, and history, we will sort by the backs and just by shapes first. We don't even have to look at the photo. We'll yeah. turn them over and, and sort them by size. You know, you know, like the 60s and 70s had those tiny little ones with a bunch like, of little mini yeah. things. Like Some four by three or like a weird Yeah, they weren't yeah. odd, odd size or whatever. Yeah. But that kind of tells us immediately what decade we're in. Right. And then once we get those sorted out, then we flip stuff over and then we can usually, we meet the family in the very beginning, you know, in the thirties and the twenties and, <laughs> you know, we start piecing people together and then, um, and then we just make it to where they get sorted by decades and we can, uh, events and, and then, but also we sort out the bad stuff as well while we're doing this and duplicates once we get to the 80s right 90s. you know whenever when all of a sudden no oh, buy yeah. one and send one to grandma yeah and then those never got sent to grandma so and you just had double. Double. <laughs> exactly and and grandma's not with us anymore and grandma right. doesn't want them right. <laughs> right so um yeah we take out all the duplicates we take them out of the envelopes we sort and we kind of just yeah. try we call it culling the collection you know, c-u-l-l-i-n-g we right. only keep we use what we call the ABCs. So A is anything that you would consider putting in an album. It's a really great shot, you love it. B are good photos. Um, you don't wanna get rid of them. Um, they may go in the album, they may not. But C, they, yeah, they tell the story. They, uh, they, yeah. they keep telling the story. And then obviously C's are. C's go into the trash can, um, <laughs> yeah. which is the hardest for people to do, which is <laughs> another reason why it's great to hire a photo organizer because we're not attached to the photos. We're really looking yeah. for the good photos. And then S would be photos um, that tell the story of of what's happening in your family. They might be a cruddy shop, but they have some kind of meaning that shape, you want to save that story and um, keep it so that it's, you know, could be Uncle George who never smiles in a photo in front of the tree that you always took a photo of. It just, you want to yeah. keep it. But that's a good way to think about getting rid of photos. That's perfect. Um, and, and I love that you sort of do, because when, and organizing, so, in what I do, I do a very similar thing, but I love the language that you're using for it. You know, like these are album quality, these are telling a story and these leave because we're very, I'm very similar where I say, you know, like this is your simple sort, like let's set, sort right. things into random piles and then let's decide the stuff that you love, the stuff that you want to store and the stuff that can go. So it's very similar to any other organizing project. You're yes. Gonna, a lot of times I think it's the volume that really overwhelms people because it is when you can, you can get into thousands of photos yes. 
so so and that's another reason when someone else isn't involved in the life of right. that family in a way it's easier for us to pull out and go this is a really good picture this is really not such a great picture and we can go through it very quickly versus if you and i'm sure this is an organizing too when you are looking at something that you want to get rid of oh look at how cute joey is that smile i remember you know and then you we tell people don't get try not to get sentimental just try to be very practical about it initially on that first sort you can always go back and appreciate all the photos but that first sort you're just looking for the good a b photos and, and when you have a family history you know if you your parents are 40 years married 50 years married and they have you know maybe three kids four kids you know five kids you have so much history <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you're not going to get that done in a weekend. You no. just are not because it took you 40 years to make. It took you a lifetime to you build know? that life. Yes. So. And it's a lot. Yeah. That is so, and I love that idea. And I love the idea that this is sort of a gift you could give to oh, your family, you know, your parents yeah. or your grandparents that have all of these things sitting around, you know, make them an album or get them organized so that, you know, when the eventual day comes that they've passed on, it's so much easier for the family to come in and say, okay, this is what we have. This is what we well, have. And it's, it's those trigger events, right? We all have trigger events when there's a death in the family, when somebody's downsizing, um, when there's a wedding or a celebration, they yeah. need something done and you have to go hunt down the photos. Um, and so those trigger events, it's a great, we work with clients often that um, have, uh, they're downsizing maybe a family home and everyone wants to have a copy of that and digitizing that photo and making a digital file that we can share online right. with everyone. There's not less fighting among siblings yeah. about who gets who that gets one photo. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we, we mentioned a little bit, I, I just mentioned a little bit about gifts. And one of the, uh -huh. yeah, so yeah sure. we wow. things. <laughs> I, I'm very excited about this because I am actually currently working on uh, a little ebook about clutter free gift giving. And I think that photo gifts are one of the greatest clutter free gifts that you can give because again, like you guys said, they tell a story, they, um, they evoke an emotion or a, a relationship to that event. But yeah. it's also something that could be practical potentially. So tell me a little bit about your suggestions this holiday season for photo gifts. But there's a, um, a digital frame that we use a lot with gifts um, and it's called Nix Play. And the fabulous thing about Nix Play is that if you have parents that don't know they're technically challenged, it can be set up Wi-Fi where we can put the photos on the frame and it can sit in grandma's house 400 miles away and it can load up with wonderful pictures. I love that so much. That it's is kind so of like, cool. a, you know, it's like playlists for it. Yeah. Nick's play, has a, whole, yes. yeah, Nick's play has a whole range of, of frames, some that are just by USB and you stick a photos on a USB and then it just runs through the photos. But Perfect. there are Wi-Fi ones that are in uh, Wi-Fi enable frames that um, you basically uh, create an ID and then you can manage their photo collection or photos remotely, like what Kim was saying. Fabulous. And so yeah. you create, that you can create genius. a playlist kind of like iTunes um, for photos. Yeah. And so, and you can do that to, once the ID is created, you can do that to multiple frames. So you could have one at yeah. your grandparents' house, you could have one at your parents' house, and you could have, uh, you could manage what goes to what frame. And it's sure. nice because then when they're not technologically savvy about it, they still get to see mm -hmm. what's happening in your life. You can email photos to it. So that's like one of our main. Do some of them play video? Do you remember? Yeah, some, some of them, them have videos. videos. So if you have a cute little recital thing, yeah. with some, you know, you can use all that. So that's, that's one awesome. of awesome. And so I'll have links to all okay. those gift Perfect. options that I'll okay. put down below and in the show notes so that anybody who's interested in this yeah. in any of these things yeah. that Tamara and Kim suggest can find them but that right there is brilliant thank you for helping me do my Christmas show. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome it really is another one that we have you know like when we talk about digitizing old photos I don't know if you'll be able to see this but this is an old photo of my dad playing um, I don't know some kind of ukulele ish type thing it's not a great photo, but it's one of the only photos that I have of him. Um, 
we have several like vendors that we use and this one is actually via phone um, I created a wood print out of it oh. and I don't know if you can see how, like you can see a little bit of the grain mm -hmm. in it and it really actually improved a really really old photo and it wasn't very expensive and it prints right on the wood and this is another one that's kind of like that sorry I didn't take and it I think this oh. one has a uh, oh. I think this one has a white like you can get it printed where it's white and then it prints the picture on the block so you don't see the wood as much but it's printed on the wood this is definitely cool I love I Isn't love that cool? it and this is another kind of variation of that sorry Kim, de <laughs> Kim designed that but it's on wood and it was for an anniversary it was for our 50th anniversary and it was lovely you know it's like they have their picture and Oops, then sorry. they um and then just you know, pictures well, from. Well, and you years. could use it at the party. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they can take it home as a souvenir, which Absolutely. I love right. double duty because. Double duty double gifts are awesome. I yeah. love that. I love that. It's beautiful. Okay. What else you got for me? We've got, <laughs> then we have a uh, metal picture. Metal prints. This is Kim and her husband. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a more modern feel, look, or whatever. And it really, this is a maybe five very, by seven. Yeah, it's a five by seven. Oh, They're very that. sleek. They're very um, sleek and modern. Um, they're very light, um, and they um, very chromatic. You know, yeah. very chromatic. I, that Love is it. actually what I got for my husband a couple years ago. We had these family pictures taken, and I'm a Michigan fan. He's an Ohio <laughs> State fan. We still love you. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> and uh, we had these family pictures taken with like the boys in Ohio State jerseys in Michigan. Oh. So I got them printed on those metal things and we have them hanging in the basement. And everybody always comments on how cool they are because they kind of float away from the wall a they little do. bit. Right. Yes. But there's just something about the metal that's a little bit different than like paper or frames or whatever. So I, you know, yeah, I'm 100% behind that metal. It is a really cool look. It's different. different. Very it's sweet. very different. Yeah. Contemporary and, yeah. And, and we've had clients that have used them on old photos that were in black and white. And it really, mm -hmm. it also worked in a way that I didn't, at first I was like, are you sure you want that on metal? <laughs> and then when they came in, I was like, oh, this is super cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, Cool. For some other good um, gifts stuff. Well, uh, photo books. Talk to me a little bit about um, photo books. We have lots of little, we have little ones that are 24 pages. So you don't need a lot of photos to. Like for the DIY that. kind of yeah. person. And this you can one. do it on your phone. Um, and this comes with a really cool box. Um, no, cover. Thing. And the cover opens up and, and then there are all the oh, photos that, that are in the book come as the cover. So it's pretty slick. And, and it then, doesn't take a lot of design, and it's a pretty simple and inexpensive kind of DIY type book. And it makes it easy because it's one photo per, per page. Because oh, people are quick. Yeah, generally. Very quick, quick. easy, yeah. Yeah. out the door. Exactly. Awesome. This guy comes with a uh, very cool box. The presentation on it is very slick. Yeah. 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 Very cool. I love this. I love all of these ideas to like share your memories. You got one more, Tamara? We got one more. This is She's kind of summer. like a, um, this is a bigger sort of graduation guest book. So you would be able to like have it at a party and have people sign um, for a birthday or for graduation or some other kind of event that you're a having. Wedding. That would be perfect for a wedding if you right, want to exactly. a couple through there. Right. Oh, that's, and that's a bigger size. And, and it's double duty, right? So the, the family gets it. We're do, we're working on another one of these where we're going to have I don't know twelve little mini books oh, that yeah. are going to be on the tables as gifts to the immediate family, yeah. and all the photos within the books relate to that person. Oh, I love that. Note. That's so smart. Yeah, and they're going to write a little note to each person to make it customized and to make it special, you know, for their special day. So it's it's lovely. You guys got a ton of stuff. Okay, so tell people where they can find you if they're interested in the stuff that you do, or maybe even they have some questions about photo organizing that they want to contact you. How can they get in touch huh. with you guys? Um, we have a website. It's called pixelwinks.com. Um, we also are pretty active on Facebook, I would say. People uh, message us that way. Um, we do classes. Um, through. We've, we uh, love to do iPhone classes because 
everyone is always confused about their phone and how to use it. And so we do some of those through the Bexley Library and Jeffrey Mansion, which is our park and rec. Um, what other ways? You know, we have emails. Your, on, yeah, I was going to say, which you, they can find your emails on your website then. On Absolutely. our website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All um, right. Another quick, like quick gift to people that costs no money at all is I love on my computer, my screensaver in the background is a trip to Hawaii. And every 30 minutes, the photo changes and it takes me back to that trip. And oftentimes we hear from adult, uh, we hear from parents that their adult children don't have time to, you know, work with them on their computer. But if they just changed like their, um, their screensaver background to be rotating pictures of their grandkids every 30 minutes. That's, a great, that's such a huge gift yeah. and it costs nothing but a little bit of time. Oh my gosh. I love that. Yeah. I love, love, love that. You guys, you're awesome. You've given us so much awesome information <laughs> today. I'm, I'm super excited about that Wi-Fi photo frame. I know. I know. It's yeah. Awesome. I, I am serious. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank and you for inviting us. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait. I, I'm sure there's a thousand things that perked up in my mind while we were talking. So we'll definitely have you guys back because we need Perfect. to talk to you about these other things. But thank you to everybody out there who watched today. I hope we Yay. gave you some great wine pairing ideas That's and some right. awesome photo organizing ideas. And we'll see you back here next week when I'm going to be talking about clutter-free gifts with Emily Rooney of Happy Organized mm -hmm. Life and Rose Lounsbury. And ah. we are going to have some awesome, awesome ideas for you guys for the holidays. So take care. Thank we you. Are.